Hey, good morning. It's great to see you today. It's Tuesday and it's the 15th of November and we're whistling through November here, aren't we? And uh, it's a bit of a dull day here in Morpeth. Uh, I've got a light on there just to give us a little bit, put a little bit of light on the matter. Uh, I was just thinking as I was as I was praying and this morning and I just prayed this morning. I said, Lord, you know, that your your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And uh, that God is our light. He He leads the way. He shows us the way that we should go. And it also reminded by a, a, another verse, which is totally nothing to do with it, today's devotion. But it says that the Holy Spirit will, will teach you, will teach you what to say, where to go, what to do. Um, and that will be my prayer for you today. That the Holy Spirit, the God will be. Uh, Jesus is the is our word, is our lamp, is our light, it's the path. And the Holy Spirit will teach you where to go and what to say, how to live. Uh, because the Holy Spirit lives within you. And the same Spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives within you. That's amazing and mighty and powerful. Anyway, we're looking today at verse 31 of in the Gospel of John, chapter 1. And this is what this is talking about. Uh, this is uh, talking about Jesus, the Lamb of God. That's a little subsection there talking about this little encounter with John the Baptist. John uh, sees Jesus coming towards him and says, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He's the one I was talking about, he said, revealed by revelation. Um, see, because he says this, a man is coming after me. He was far greater than I am. He existed long before me. I did not recognize him as, as the Messiah, but I've been baptizing with water so that he might be revealed to Israel. So John didn't recognize him as the Messiah, even though uh, he's, he was his, first of all, he, he was his cousin, um, but obviously he wouldn't have seen him that much because they were living in different parts of the country. Jesus for many years lived away whilst Herod was king and then moved back to the area. They moved to a different area. They moved to Nazareth. They lived there. Um, so they lived somewhere different. Um, he said, I didn't recognize him as the Messiah, but I've been baptizing with water so that he might be revealed to Israel. You see, John the Baptist was his role was to come to pro to proclaim that the Messiah is coming. That's what he was saying. Well, actually, he was saying, "Repent, for the kingdom of God is near." He wasn't saying necessarily, "I don't know," because doesn't say there. But he was saying, "I am the voice in the in the in the in the wilderness, shouting, clear the way for the Lord's coming." So he was saying this. He was saying this, but the Pharisees did not believe him. And I actually was reading in um, Matthew's Gospel as well. And Jesus said about, he talked about John the Baptist. And he said that he was Elijah. Because when they said to him, uh, when they said to John the Baptist, are you Elijah? No, he replied. Because he wasn't Elijah, because he was John the Baptist. But actually, it was a type, he was coming as a type of Elijah. I don't know whether the Pharisees actually believed Elijah was going to come back physically from the dead. I don't, know what, I don't know what they believed. But there was something about Elijah was going to come before the coming Messiah. But what John was doing, here it is, he was saying, this is what I was doing, I was baptising with water so that he might be revealed to Israel. What was John the Baptist doing? He was coming and he was saying, the kingdom of God is near. Repent, repent, and as a sign of repentance, be baptised in the water. You see, under the Jewish uh, law, there was a, you know, people came, there was a thing where they could come and, and actually and repent and be baptized and this is why they said what authority are you doing this because actually this should have been done by the priests but actually guess what john the baptist was actually of the priestly order because he was the first son of zechariah so ordinarily john would have become a pharisee but actually god had called him to some so a different purpose something far higher something far greater um, because he called him to be a, a, the prophet who declared the word of the Lord, who, called, who, who prophesied of the coming of the Messiah. He was there, as it says, in the voice in the wilderness, shouting, clear the way for the Lord's coming, which again is from Isaiah chapter 40. You know, we talked about this last night at the, uh, the meeting, that, we, that we, all, we all need to have this prophetic edge to us. We all have the Holy Spirit. If you're a Christian, if you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit living within us we all have the potential to be to, to speak words of prophecy but actually prophetic came really in handy for Jesus because when Jesus when they asked him tricky questions 
Um, you know, Jesus, you know, Jesus was a prophet. You, you do know that, don't you? Jesus was a prophet because he said, I only do the things uh, I see the Father doing. I only say the things I hear the Father saying, which means everything he was saying was prophetic because that's what the Holy Spirit, that's what the God, the Father was saying. When we speak prophetic words, when we speak prophetically, what are we speaking? We're saying what God is saying. And it was very handy to Jesus. It was very handy to him in a certain tricky situation. I talked about this last night at the at the encounter meeting because they the, the Pharisees were trying to trick Jesus. And they said, is it right to pay taxes to Caesar? Jesus knew what they were thinking. Jesus always knew what they were thinking. Why? Because the whole, if he was filled with the Holy Spirit. He had that word of knowledge. He could hear. He knew what God was saying, he was speaking to him. He was listening at the same time as talking to him. And he said, give me a coin. He said, whose head's on the coin? And they said, Caesar. And he said those immortal words, which was revealed to him by the Holy Spirit, that prophetic word that was brought. He said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, give to God what belongs to God. And it totally diffused the situation and dealt with that thing once and for all. Listen, we're called to be prophetic in everything we do and everything we say. Why? Because we're called to... To do what Jesus did first and foremost, we're called. We're called to be like Him, and we're called to do the things that He did, and greater things than these. He said. So we are called to do the things that Jesus, that the Father is telling us to do, or Holy Spirit is telling us to do. We're called to say the word, to speak the words that the Holy Spirit is speaking us to, to us to say, and in that way, we're being prophetic. We are bringing the word of the Lord. Maybe maybe we're not saying repent, maybe we're not saying all these other kind of things, but we're bringing God's word into God's situation, wherever we are, wherever we go, whatever we do, or at least we should be. If we are listening to hear the Holy Spirit, and if we are speaking those words, my opinion about something doesn't count, doesn't matter, because actually in, in Christ, I'm dead, I'm dead, but, what, but I'm made alive in Christ Jesus. What counts is his opinion. His opinion about a certain situation. And I need to hear more and more what God is saying about certain situations so I can speak prophetically to wherever I go, whatever I do, uh, any time of the day or the week. Listen, my time is gone now. So listen, I hope you have a great day today. Take care. God bless. I'll see you again tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen.